Imagine walking into a casino with a simple goal. Win exactly $100 and walk away. Sounds straightforward, right? But here's where mathematics reveals something counterintuitive about gambling that challenges our basic understanding of risk, probability, and rational decision-making. Let me introduce you to three very different gamblers, each with the same goal but vastly different approaches. Bob walks into the casino with exactly $100 in his pocket. His strategy is elegantly simple. Bet everything on red at the roulette table. If he wins, he doubles his money to $200, pockets his $100 profit, and walks away victorious. If he loses, he's broke and goes home empty-handed. Since red pays one-to-one -one odds, and there are 18 red spaces out of 38 total spots on a double-zero roulette wheel, Bob has roughly a 47.4% chance of achieving his goal. It's essentially a coin flip, slightly weighted against him. Alice arrives with $10,000 but takes a completely different approach. She's going to bet just $1 on red, over and over again, until one of two things happens. Either she's up exactly $100 or she loses everything. This might seem like a much safer strategy. After all, she has 10,000 chances to slowly build up her winnings. She only needs to accumulate 100 more wins than losses before her bankroll disappears entirely. With nearly a 47.4% chance of winning each individual spin, Surely her odds are much better than Bob's, right? Now meet Carlos, the richest person in our hypothetical universe. He walks in with $100 trillion, more money than exists in the real world. Like Alice, he's going to bet $1 at a time on red until he either wins $100 or loses everything. With such an enormous bankroll, Carlos has virtually unlimited opportunities to recover from losses. He needs 100 more wins than losses before accumulating 100 trillion more losses than wins. Intuitively, his chances of success should be astronomically higher than Alice's, shouldn't they? Here's where mathematics delivers its first surprise. Alice has only a 0.00265% chance of winning $100. That's not a typo. It's about 26 chances in a million. Despite her $10,000 bankroll and conservative approach, it's almost certain she'll lose everything before making her modest profit. But the real shock comes with Carlos. Despite his $100 trillion bankroll, literally a million times larger than Alice's, his probability of success is essentially identical, 0.00265%. The difference between their odds is so minuscule that you need a high-precision calculator just to detect it. For all practical purposes, the person with $10,000 and the person with $100 trillion have exactly the same chance of winning $100 using this strategy. This counterintuitive result emerges from a specific mathematical formula that governs what's called the gambler's ruin problem. The equation that determines your probability of reaching a profit goal before going broke is P equals 1 minus Q over P raised to the power of A, all divided by 1 minus Q over P raised to the power A plus B, where P is your probability of success. P is your probability of winning each bet, 18 over 38, which is approximately 0.474 for red and roulette. Q is your probability of losing each bet, 20 over 38, which is approximately 0.526 for red in roulette. A is your starting bankroll in betting units. B is your profit goal in betting units. The reason Carlos's massive bankroll barely helps him lies in the fundamental mathematics of biased random walks. In roulette, you're slightly more likely to lose each spin than win. Over time, this small bias compounds exponentially. Think of it this way. Imagine you're walking along a path where each step has a 47.4% chance of moving you forward and a 52.6% chance of moving you backward. Even if you start very far from the cliff behind you, the backward bias means you'll almost certainly eventually reach that cliff, no matter how far away it initially seemed. The mathematical term for this is certain ruin. When the odds are against you, even slightly, and you play indefinitely, mathematical certainty dictates that you will eventually lose everything regardless of your starting position. Let's examine a more realistic scenario. Suppose you walk into a casino with 20 betting units, perhaps $200 at a $10 minimum table or $2,000 at a $100 table. You're going to bet one unit at a time on red or black until you either reach a profit goal or go broke. Here's how your probability of success changes based on your profit target. Goal, one unit profit, 47.4% chance of success. Goal, two units profit, 44.9% chance of success. Goal, five units profit, 37.1% chance of success. Goal, 10 units profit, 
26.3% chance of success. Goal, 15 units profit. 17.8% chance of success. Goal, 20 units profit. 11.1% chance of success. Notice something interesting here. If you set modest goals, like winning just one or two betting units, you come close to even odds of achieving them. You almost have a 50-50 shot at walking away with a small profit. This leads to a crucial insight. The common phrase, the house always wins, isn't quite accurate. The house wins in the long run and across all players, but any individual player can structure their gambling to have a respectable chance of short-term success, even if it's still slightly below 50%. However, there's a catch that explains why casinos always remain profitable, despite some players having almost 50% chances of winning. Let's examine what happens when 100 people each try to win 5 units using the 20-unit strategy described above. Approximately 37 people will succeed, each winning 5 units. A total of 185 units won. But the remaining 63 people will lose their entire 20-unit bankrolls. A total of 1,260 units lost. The math is stark. 1,260 units lost versus 185 units won. The total losses exceed the total wins by more than 6 to 1. This is how casinos make money. Not by ensuring every player loses, but by ensuring that when players do lose, they lose much more than the winners win. Every casino game can be reduced to a fundamental mathematical concept, expected value. This represents the average amount you can expect to lose per bet over the long term, and it's built into every game structure. Consider a simplified version of roulette as a coin flip game. If heads means you win 90 cents and tails means you lose $1, your expected loss per flip is 0.5 times 90 cents plus 0.5 times negative $1 equals negative 5 cents. This represents a 5% house edge. You can expect to lose 5 cents for every dollar you wager over time. Real Roulette has a house edge of 5.26% on double zero wheels. This means that over time, you'll lose $5.26 for every $100 you wager, regardless of whether you bet on red, black, odd, even, or individual numbers. Different casino games have different house edges, but they all share one characteristic. The house edge is always positive, meaning you always have a negative expected return. Here are some common examples. Double zero roulette, 5.26% house edge. Craps, 1.4, 1% house edge. Baccarat, 1.06% house edge. Blackjack, 0.5% house edge. These percentages allow you to calculate your expected losses precisely. If you bet $10 per spin for 500 spins at roulette, you'll wager $5,000 total. Your expected loss is $5,000 times 0.0526 equals $263. If you made the same bets playing craps instead, $5,000 times 0.0141 1 equals $70.50. The mathematics is identical regardless of the payout structure. Whether you bet on red with 1 to 1 payout or a single number with 35 to 1 payout in roulette, your expected loss per dollar wagered remains exactly 5.26%. Understanding these mathematical principles reveals why different people choose different strategies, often without realizing the mathematical implications of their choices. Bob's all-or-nothing approach gives him the best odds of achieving his specific goal, nearly a 50% chance but it also guarantees he'll either win $100 or lose $100 with no middle ground. Alice and Carlos, despite their vastly different bankrolls, both chose strategies that almost guarantee failure. Their conservative approach feels safer psychologically, but mathematically, it's far riskier than Bob's bold bet. This psychological disconnect between perceived risk and actual risk is one of the most important insights from casino mathematics. Our intuition tells us that Having more money and betting smaller amounts should be safer. But the mathematics reveals this intuition to be profoundly wrong when the odds are against us. Many gamblers attempt to beat the house edge using betting systems, with the Martingale system being the most famous. The idea is simple. Bet $1 on red. If you lose, bet $2. If you lose again, bet $4. Keep doubling until you win, then start over. The logic seems sound. You'll eventually win and recover all previous losses plus a $1 profit but the mathematics reveals why this system fails spectacularly. First, you need an unlimited bankroll to guarantee success, which no one has. Second, casino betting limits prevent infinite doubling. Most critically, the expected value remains negative 
regardless of your betting pattern. If you start with a $1 bet and can double seven times before hitting table limits, you risk losing $127 to win $1. Even with a 99.22% chance of success, meaning winning within seven spins, your expected loss per sequence is 0.9922 times $1 plus 0 0.0078 times negative $127 equals negative $0.0528. You still lose 5.28 cents per sequence on average, essentially the same house edge as flat betting. The mathematical foundation underlying all these gambling scenarios is the random walk problem. Imagine you're standing on a number line. Each step, you move right with probability P or left with probability Q, where P plus Q equals one. If P is greater than Q, meaning positive expectation, you'll generally drift rightward toward positive infinity. If P is less than Q, meaning negative expectation, you'll eventually reach zero and face ruin with mathematical certainty, regardless of your starting position. Casino games create negative expectation random walks. No matter where you start or how you bet, the mathematics ensures that continued play leads to eventual ruin. The only question is how long it takes. One of the most important concepts in casino mathematics is the law of large numbers. Your actual results will converge toward the mathematical expectation as the number of trials increases. After a few dozen bets, your results might deviate significantly from expectations. You could be up or down by substantial amounts. But after thousands of bets, your losses will closely approximate the house edge percentage of your total wagers. This convergence explains why casinos can offer games with relatively modest house edges. They don't need to win big on every player. They just need to ensure that over time and across all players, the mathematics works in their favor. Given the mathematical realities, what's the smartest strategy if you still feel tempted to gamble? Don't gamble at all. Every game is designed with a house edge that guarantees one thing. Over time, you will lose. It's not bad luck. It's math. The odds are never in your favor, and no system, hunch, or hot streak can change that. If you're serious about making rational decisions, walking away is the only winning move.